Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create the splice plate on page 157 in unit 11, the threaded fastener section of your book. Um, the first thing I want to do is start a new part. <clears throat> Excuse me, make sure that my units are inches, pounds, and seconds. And I'm also going to double check and make sure that I have ANSI drafting standard. Perfect. Now I'm going to add plain carbon steel and I'm going to save the part. This is probably the most important step, um, especially when you're taking a quiz or a final exam, that you save the file as something that you'll remember. Like this is called the splice plate. So I'm going to make sure that I save it as the splice plate in the correct folder. So if uh, my SOLIDWORKS crashes or my computer crashes, I can find it easily. Now, I want to draw the splice plate. It's a very simple shape, and I'm going to draw it on the front plane. And you have to pay attention to how the view is dimensioned. All of your dimensions are coming from the lower left-hand corner. So when I draw this shape, and I'm just going to be using the line command, I want to use the line command and draw the shape using the convention that's in the book. So if the lower left-hand corner is my 0, 0, that's where I'm going to start from. So now you'll see that my origin is in the lower left-hand corner, and that's going to be my 0, 0. Now I'm going to show you how to dimension this part using uh, ordinate dimensions, which is exactly how it's dimensioned in the book. So underneath Smart Dimension, I'm going to choose Horizontal Ordinate Dimension. We're going to do both vertical and horizontal, but I'm going to start with horizontal. And I'm going to establish the left side of my part as my zero. And I'll do that one more time. So underneath Smart Dimension, I'm going to click Horizontal Ordinate Dimension, and I need, to, I need a starting point. And my starting point is going to be this left edge. So when I place my cursor below, that's my zero. And now any point or any line that I select, it's going to start adding my ordinate dimensions to that. Good. And now I'm just going to double check, I'm going to double click these dimensions and change their values to match the values that are on page 157. Good. And now I'm going to go back to Smart Dimension and choose Vertical Ordinate Dimensions. Establish the bottom of my part as my zero. and then add the other two and modify them. I want this one to be 1.62 and the top dimension is 2.5. So ordinate dimensions, a really easy way to dimension geometry instead of doing the traditional, you know, from left to right is 4.62 type of dimensioning. Um, ordinate dimensions are nice. It keeps the dimensions nice and neat. They're easy to modify, and they're easy to add. And that's it. That's the shape of the part. I'm done. So I'm going to revert back to my isometric view. I'm going to hit Features, Extrude, and we're going to come forward at a blind depth of 0.5 inches. And then perfect time to do a quick file save. Okay. At this point, the rest of the part is hole wizard, the whole thing. So I'm going to do the holes on the right side first, and then there's a series of holes on the left side. We'll save that for last. So remember, when using hole wizard, the first thing you want to do is pre-select the surface you want to put the hole on. Then you go to hole wizard, and we're going to choose the 
the lower right tap toll first, which is a half inch 13. So from this list, I want to make sure that straight tap is selected. Ansi inch, tap toll. I want half 13 selected. And it goes through the entire part. So we don't have to worry about any blind depths underneath end condition. We just want to choose through all. That way our tap toll is through all and our tap depth is through all. And underneath options, I like to choose this middle button that says cosmetic thread that shows the threads using a cosmetic representation. And then I like with thread call out. You don't have to choose thread class. Um, some companies require it, sometimes you don't. So once your whole type is selected, we're gonna click on the positions tab and we're gonna place the point somewhere down here. And I do not like, and that's it. And I'm gonna hit escape and cancel out of the point command because we just, we're adding one threaded hole. I like to look at the surface normal to. So I'm gonna come up to my view orientation cube and I'm gonna hit the normal to button. And then I'm gonna use, again, ordinate dimensions to apply the location of this hole. So establish my zero, place my point, come over to vertical, establish my zero, place the point. And this one is 0.62 up by four inches over. And that's it. That's the first tap hole. I'm gonna do the second one. So I'm gonna click on the surface. I'm gonna to go to hole wizard. This next one is 5 sixteenths dash 18. So all I have to do is switch from half 13 to 5 sixteenths 18. Everything else stays the same, except its position changes. So I'm gonna establish my zero, grab the point. I'll switch over to vertical ordinate dimensions, establish my zero. Place the point and then position it. This one is one and a half inches up and this one is 3.62 over. And then I'm gonna hit the green check mark. And it's repetitive, it's a little tedious, but it's not difficult. And uh, let's add the third one. Again, I'm gonna pre-select the surface. I'm gonna to go to hole wizard. This is a half 13 tapped hole. So I'm gonna switch over to a half 13. Actually, um, I'm gonna go back because if this, if these two holes are the same, I can edit my initial feature. So I'm gonna edit my half 13 feature. I'm gonna switch over to the positions tab and I'm gonna drop a second point. I just noticed that, so it's gonna be even easier. And this is how you do it. I have a second point that's free floating, but I wanna add this point to my initial origin over here. So I have to right click on this zero and select add to ordinate. And then I can add that point. And I have to do the same thing in this direction. I have to right click and select add to ordinate and then select that second point. And now just double click. All right, very good. So now I have all three. Perfect time to do a quick file save. Last step is this series of holes over here, all right? There's 12 holes total. I'm only going to make one. So I'm gonna click the surface that I wanna put the hole on, go to hole wizard, and switch to a quarter 28. So it's a little bit smaller, and it's a fine thread because it has 28 threads per inch. It's going through all. So I'm gonna click positions, and I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm only gonna place this first one right there. And I'm gonna use my ordinates so I'm gonna use my 
horizontal ordinate first, and then I'll do my vertical. I'm going to change my dimensions. And that's it. I'm done. So that's the first tap total. Now we have 12 total, but I'm going to apply this first one. And now I'm going to use a linear pattern to take this one tap total and make 11 more. So I'm going to pre-select my quarter 28 tap total in my feature manager. And I'm going to click Linear Pattern. Linear Pattern is looking for a direction. Sometimes one, sometimes two directions. In this case, we're going to have two directions. So direction one is going to be this direction, this bottom linear edge. And you can see that it's starting to send the hole in that direction. Now, if it was going to the left, all I'd have to do is hit this reverse direction button. I can send the holes to the left, or I can send them to the right. But I want them going to the right, and I want the distance between them to be a half inch, just like on page 157. And I want four total, so one, two, three, four. If I wanted six, I could punch in the number of instances that I want over here on the left-hand side. So I've pre-selected the edge, that sends it in a direction. I can send the holes to the left or to the right. I can increase the distance between the holes or set them back to a half inch. And I can change the number of holes anytime I want. So very nice. And now direction two, I have to select another linear edge that's going in the direction that I want. In this case, it's gonna be this linear edge. And I say, I want the distance between them to be half inch. And I want three sets. And I don't want them going in this direction. See how they're going down? So over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to hit reverse direction. And that's it. That's linear pattern. That should have been a review, but it is a good review. And my part is done. File save, and then uh, I would move on to the detail drawing. Thank you.